Good morning. I hope it's morning and you are now. I am very sorry that I cannot be today with you because I would love to hear the discussion after my presentation and um, uh, have some feedback, which is very important. So, we suggest to make a film about Anna Politkovskaya. As you know, there have been made already a couple of films about Anna. It was a while ago, two years ago, straight after her assassination. So you will ask me, what, what will be new in your film? It also is, will be about Anna. Yes, it will. But it will be a film about another Anna, about Anna very few people know, only those who were very close friends of her, who lived with her, who went to the university with her. And I am one of these people. So our friendship with Anna started a very long time ago. I couldn't even never then believe that she will become who she became. She was a student uh, in the Moscow University where, where I was teaching. Her future husband was my favorite student. And uh, I was at their wedding. Then I made a film about the young family in 1990. It was a great time then. It was a time of hope and dreams when Gorbachev started uh, his changes and we were so hopeful that our country will start blossoming and will change drastically. So, uh, I was making a film about this family of two journalists and uh, show what, through their lives, what was happening in the country. I made the film, it was shown, but then, for a couple of years I haven't seen Anna. However, during the period of shooting, we became very close with her. She was much more interesting than her husband, I'm sorry to say. That's why I concentrated all my attention on her. And I filmed a lot of material. Very interesting. At least I felt she's a charming, um, very sparkling, unusual person. And we hit it off, and she liked me, I liked her. So, from time to time, after 1919, I uh, came to see her, and then we became more and more closer and closer. You know, the distance of age vanished somehow, and we were just very good friends. Every time we got together, I came with my camera. I was going with my camera everywhere because the changes in Russia were so exciting and promising that I just couldn't afford putting the camera down. So I have lots of footage about different stages of Russian development from the beginning of Perestroika to, to, up to today. So... Um, I was shooting, as I said, and every time I came to Anna, I had a camera. And we were talking to each other. I was shooting. It was not interview. It was not interviews that I was shooting. It was conversations, because I didn't have to interview her. I told her about my life. She told me about her life. We were exchanging ideas. There was a lot of things to exchange. And that's why, you know, it was every time such an inspiring conversation, sometimes pretty, um, pretty uh, horrible. But it was always interesting because I learned from her a lot. And she learned from me also some things because I was living in the United States at the time and she was very curious uh, at how the institutions work in the United States. And that lasted for many, many years. Then, um, and then came this horrible moment of her assassination. I was always afraid that something may happen to her because she was may, re, working in a very risky part of, the, of Russia, Chechnya, 
and Caucasus. It is a very risky part. And I told her a couple of times, Anna, be, Anna, be um, kind of cautious. And she said, ah, oh, Marina Evsevna, what will happen will happen. You cannot avoid your destiny. So when it happened and she was assassinated, I was completely crushed. And her children called me the very same day and said, they knew I have so much footage of Anna. They called me and they said, do you want to make a film about her? I said, I do. And I, of course, will make a film about her, but not now. I, I, have, to, I have to live some time with you know, with the getting used to this terrible news. So now I'm ready. Now I'm ready to make a film. It will be a film about Anna who never nobody knew. You know, when I was watching films about her, they were different. They were better, they were worse, they were but they were all very decent and very um, interesting and needed at the time. But you know, there was no Anna. There was a woman who was brave, who was a warrior, who was a soldier, who was fighting for human rights of people. But there was no human being, Anna, whom I knew so well. And uh, my film, my tape, captured this Anna. Anna, who was a human being, who was charming, who was who was you with a very good sense of humor, who was beautiful, who was brave, who was generous, who could give her life for the cause that she was, you know, for her it was the main thing. And uh, she was a fantastic mother, she was a tender friend, she was a person with many, many faces. And I'm so happy that I was filming her all these years. I have many, many, many hours of Anna. And then, just now, I came back from Moscow. Number one, I wanted to finish uh, the film. And in order to finish the film, I needed to shoot today's Moscow, contemporary Moscow. Uh, and I needed winter. There is no Russia without winter. So I went there, and at the same time I was looking for people who knew Anna on different stages of her life and who never were filmed, because uh, probably the films w that were made uh, before, they were made very quickly, and the directors had no time to research, and they didn't have such good advisors as I had. For example, Vera, Ilusha, her children, her sister, her mother, who gave me, who talked to me for hours and hours and told me so much about Anna. So nobody has this material. And this material preserves Anna in, on different stages of her life, which will give me a fantastic opportunity to make a film that nobody has ever seen and will not see if I will not make it. So I very much hope that you will be generous to me, you will be kind to me, that you will understand what I want to do, and I promise that this film will be unique.